Hello students, today we'll be learning chapter 7 from your science and technology textbook for standard 9. Energy flow in an ecosystem. This is also the second chapter from your science part 2 from the textbook. So come along then. Let's read and understand it. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. We just learnt about the biogeochemical cycle. So now let's read about the carbon cycle within this biogeochemical cycle. So the circulation and recycling of carbon from the atmosphere to the living organisms and after their death back to the atmosphere is called the carbon cycle. So abiotic carbon atoms are circulated and recycled into biotic form mainly through photosynthesis and respiration. Hence the carbon cycle is one of the important biogeochemical cycles. So this we know isn't it? We The carbon dioxide is taken by plants and uh, to prepare their food and then uh, the oxygen is re released which we take. Okay, so this cycle keeps on going on and plants convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates by the process of photosynthesis. So we have learnt that they, uh, the plants take the carbon dioxide and in the presence of sunlight they change this into carbohydrates that is they produce their own food. Similarly, they produce carbon compounds like proteins and fats too. So, they just don't produce carbohydrates but they also produce carbon compounds like proteins and fats. So, herbivorous feed on the plants. So, we know the herbivorous animals, isn't it? The cow, the elephant, all these things, they are herbivorous animals, they feed on plants and carnivorous feed on herbivorous. In this way, the biotic carbon is transferred from the plants to the herbivores, from the herbivores to the carnivores and from the carnivores to the apex consumers and from the apex consumers to the decomposers and back into the nature. So that is how the carbon cycle is completed. So we know that uh, plants first take the carbon dioxide, they will produce the food which is consumed by the herbivores from the herbivores to the carnivores, the ca from the carnivores to uh, you know, to the apex, you know, so we have the primary, the secondary and the apex consumers and then from there to the decomposers and back to nature. So, the cycle is completed. Look at the, observe the picture carefully. So, here we have the sun that is the main source of energy. So, in the presence of sun, the carbon is absorbed by the plants which are then, you know, consumed by the, um, by the herbivores and the herbivores are eaten by the uh, carnivores and such the cycle keeps on going on and in the similar way when we burn okay our factories or burn trees or anything the carbon dioxide which is present in each and everything is again transferred back to uh, the atmosphere which is again taken by the plants so uh, this is how the carbon cycle keeps on going. So, this is given in a chemical equation. We know that how the plants, the plants take the carbon dioxide in the presence of water that is nutrients and uh, sunlight and uh, chlorophyll, they are, they prepare carbohydrates that is the glucose and uh, water is released as well as oxygen gas is given out. Now, this oxygen gas is absorbed by other living organisms that is the consumers. Okay, so it is now the food that was present in the plants get transferred to the uh, carnivorous animals. Okay, the herbivores and then the carnivores. So that is how the food or the uh, carbohydrates gets transferred. That is the glucose. This is the equation for glucose and now in the presence of oxygen, the mitochondria in the cell will convert the food into energy okay, and give out water and carbon dioxide is released. So that is how the cycle goes on and this is the chemical equation for the carbon cycle. Now what happens eventually after death of all types of consumers are decomposed by decomposers like the bacteria and fungi and carbon dioxide is released again into the atmosphere and is used again by the living organisms. So, in this way, carbon is continuously passed from one living organism to the other. So, we know that carbon 
passes from the herbivores to the carnivores to the composers and back into the nature after the death of the living organisms uh, carbon goes to the atmosphere and is again taken by the living organisms okay so this is how the cycle gets completed now this is a little more information about carbon dioxide so did you know this carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere to the abiotic processes like burning of fossil fuels fossil fuels are all our petroleum products and wood forest fires and volcanic activity so again carbon dioxide that is present uh, in the different forms get released when we burn it burn all these fossil fuels or wood or forest fires or volcanic activity and oxygen is released into the atmosphere by the biotic process of photosynthesis and carbon dioxide through respiration by the plants okay so plants take the carbon dioxide and give out oxygen so the equilibrium that is the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide, oxide gas in the atmosphere is maintained by the plants it is because of the plants that we have this balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen in nature now i want you all to think about this okay now the carbon cycle is very effective in the temperate region why is it so think about this okay and you can even go through the internet or google to find your answers even though the carbon content on the earth is constant isn't it we know that carbon now uh, everything is constant on this earth why is there a rise in temperature due to carbon dioxide so we say that lots of factories are creating you know a lot of carbon dioxide is released so why is this then identify the relationship between carbon in the air and rise in the atmospheric temperature so you could reflect and find out the answers from the internet and to check your answers you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below let's understand the oxygen cycle oxygen forms 21% of the atmosphere we know of the various gases that are present in the atmosphere oxygen is 21% now not only in the atmosphere but oxygen is also present in the hydrosphere hydrosphere is a water so we know water is uh, partly of oxygen isn't it? it is made up of oxygen and lithosphere so on the land forms also in various in the soil also it is present circulation and recycling of oxygen within the biosphere is called oxygen cycle so again atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere and all these circulating among the biosphere is called the oxygen cycle and this cycle too includes both the biotic as well as the abiotic components so oxygen is continuously produced as well as it is used up in the atmosphere we know that we need oxygen for various purposes as well as it is released by the plants all type of plants so this cycle also keeps on going on oxygen is highly reactive and it readily reacts with other elements and compounds so it reacts with all elements and compounds and as oxygen is formed in various forms like molecular oxygen that is it is present in atmosphere oxygen gas water h2o carbon dioxide so we have co2 so in organic compounds so it is present in all the forms Uh, the oxygen cycle of the biosphere is extremely complex so it is well, you know since it readily gets mixed up and with other elements and compounds so these cycles are also you know we have to study them minutely so it is not very easy to describe it and it has a um, extreme complex cycle oxygen released in the process of photosynthesis whereas it is used up in the process like respiration combustion that is burning decomposition corrosion and rusting rusting of metals and all that so oxygen is released as well as it is used up now do you know most microorganisms use oxygen for respiration so microorganisms being living organisms they use oxygen now such microbes are called aerobes 
okay so the microbes that use oxygen are called aerobes but microbes which do not need oxygen are called anaerobes so there are two types of microbes one that use oxygen and the other that do not use oxygen oxygen is important for the synthesis of proteins carbohydrates and fats and it is also used in the various chemical reactions so oxygen is needed in for various purposes now ozone that is o3 is produced from oxygen through various atmospheric processes we know that the ozone layer is present in the atmosphere now before we study about the nitrogen cycle let's recall what have we learned do you all remember children what is meant by nitrogen fixation which microbes bring about the process of nitrogen fixation to know the answers you could visit the internet or visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below now let's understand the nitrogen cycle we know that nitrogen forms 78% that is the maximum portion of the atmosphere among all the gases that are present in the atmosphere 78% is nitrogen and it is necessary for the maintenance of the cycle of nature so how it is the circulation and recycling of nitrogen gas into the form of different compounds through various biotic and abiotic processes in nature is called the nitrogen cycle so if you study this picture very carefully the nitrogen that is present in the atmosphere uh, it is when there is thunder and lightning and in the form of rainfall it is converted into the various forms of nitrates and nitrites okay and it is absorbed in the soil and when it is going into the soil it is converted into uh, the nitrates which is absorbed by the plants all organisms participate in the nitrogen cycle so all organisms need nitrogen so therefore indirectly they are participating in the nitrogen cycle so it is an important component of proteins and nucleic acids so how does how do we get the nitrogen we get it from the plants so as compared to other elements it is inactive and does not easily come bind with other elements so it's very very inactive but most organisms cannot use the free form of nitrogen so we cannot take directly but it has to come through the various other sources and that is human beings get nitrogen with the, from the plants now these are the important processes of the nitrogen cycle one is the nitrogen fixation what does it mean it is the conversion of nitrogen into nitrites and uh, nitrates and nitrites through atmospheric industrial and biological process in the earlier page we saw, just saw that when during there is the uh, you know during rainfall these this is how the uh, atmospheric nitrogen gets converted that is called the nitrogen fixation then we have the ammonification that is release of ammonia through decomposition of dead bodies and excretory waste of organisms when we uh, throw the waste products from our body excrete it so that is how the ammonia gas is released then we have the nitrification that is conversion of this ammonia into nitrite and then the nitrate and denitrification that is conversion of nitrogen compounds into gases uh, gaseous uh, nitrogen so it has gone back to nature in the form of nitrogen gas so nitrogen gas present in the atmosphere get through nitrogen fixation and through ammonia gas it is released back into the soil uh, it goes into the soil and from the plants again the nitrogen compounds are released in the form of nitrogen gas back into nature so do a little research children surf the internet that is go through the internet for information about the processes of oxygen cycle carbon cycle similar to those of the nitrogen cycle so you can find out more such processes we saw four processes of the nitrogen cycle so such processes you can see under oxygen cycle also and the carbon cycle and create uh, and find out more information about it 
I hope you all enjoy the lesson children. Do solve the exercise given to you at the end of the chapter and to check your answers you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below thank you bye bye